Come, join me by the candlelight. It had been quite some time since the circus had come to Los Toloma. As a matter of fact, it had been years. Sharla knew because her cousin had told her the stories, all about the murdered boys. It was over ten years ago when the Danvers Circus had come to town, and the Andrews brothers were brutally murdered. The boys had gotten separated from their parents, and come time to leave, the boys were nowhere to be found. Their mother, Martha, was in a panic. They called the police in to search for the boys, and eventually, they found them in a field not far from the circus. All three had been disemboweled and tied together with their entrails. The sleepy town of Los Toloma had never seen anything like it. The deputy, Mike Hansen, was the one that first found them. He had chili for dinner. It wasn't that great going down, but was ten times worse coming back up. Finally, he was able to radio the sheriff. They had to tarp the boys until the coroner showed up. They called in some local good old boys to help in the search. Several hunting dogs tracked the scent straight to Jim Bob the Clown's tent. Was there any point in denying it? His bloody costume was laying on a cot in the corner of the tent. Let's just say local justice was served up on a platter that night. Come time for the circus to leave, Jim Bob was nowhere to be found. According to the papers, the case went cold, but the locals knew. Mike Hansen, who was the sheriff, now was on patrol. He was driving down Old Claymore Road when he slammed on the brakes. There it was, the Danvers Circus. Mike had raised hell with the town manager when he told him he had approved the permit for the circus. Everything came back to him when he saw that red-white tent. This was not going to go over well with the locals that were there ten years ago. Mr. and Mrs. Andrews had already saw the trucks come into town with the big banner, Danvers Circus. They had already paid a visit to the sheriff's office. Mike had a feeling this was going to go bad, real bad. The circus was set to open that Friday. The local kids, the ones that didn't know the story about the Andrews brothers, were excited. Sharla wasn't excited, but she was curious. Sharla's parents told her to stay far from Old Claymore Road and far from the Danvers Circus. I mean it, Sharla, said her dad. If I catch you anywhere near there, I'll tan your hide but good. Cars were lined up and down Old Claymore Road. The music from the circus was echoing in the air. That wasn't the only thing in the air. Sheriff Hansen had his deputies on alert. Make sure to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. And I mean anything. What are you expecting tonight, Sheriff? Asked Deputy Johns. Nothing. I can put my finger on... Johns. But something's not right. Some of those good old boys are riled up and... That never ends well. We'll be watching, Sheriff. Don't worry about that, said Johns. Sheriff Hanson said, We don't want a repeat of ten years ago, Johns. I'm not going through that shit again. The crowd filed through the gates, some out of wanting a night out with the family, some out of morbid curiosity. Neither would have ever suspected how the night would end. Ralph Murdoch, a member of the good old boys club, was there. He didn't want to go, but he couldn't help himself. Neither could Roy Jones and Jeff Walker, also both members of the good old boys. Sheriff Hansen had spotted them already. What are you doing here, Ralph? Hope you're not planning any trouble. I'm not, Ramsey. I won't tolerate any local justice, said Hansen. Ralph knew exactly what Sheriff Hansen was talking about, and he knew he meant business. Roy and Jeff came up to Ralph, standing by the food tent. So what's going on, Ralph? What's the plan? asked Roy. No plan, Roy. 
Hansen is on the lookout and he means business. We're just here to make sure no funny business goes down. You got that, boys? That kind of disappointed Roy, as he was always looking for trouble. The weather had been clear that day, sunshine and blue skies, as far as the eyes could see. The forecast for tonight was clear with starry skies. The crowd was much larger than Sheriff Hansen had thought it would be. He was trying to ease his nerves, but his gut was in knots. He felt something was coming, and he expected it would be coming from Ralph Murdoch and his crew. Little did he know, Sharla, not following her father's demands, had snuck out to Old Claymore Road. She figured someone would tell on her, and she would get her hide tanned, just as her father promised. But she just couldn't help herself. A few of the local high school boys didn't head to the circus. They headed to the field. The field where the Andrew boys were found. The field where local justice had been served up. The field that would become their resting place. The boys were searching the field for any evidence of a grave. They had heard the rumors of what happened to Jim Bob that night, long ago. Hey Tony, come over here and check this out. The hell is this? asked Mitchell. It was a strange looking flat stone. On it was the inscription, Here lies the body of Jim Bob. He was struck down in time for doing his crime. May he rot in hell for eternity. Keith, another of the boys said, Okay, you found it. Now let's get out of here, okay? My skin is crawling. We came here to see, and I'm not leaving until I do, said Tony. Right about then, there was a distant thunder. It seemed so far off, so no one was concerned. I thought it was supposed to be clear tonight, Sheriff John said in his usual slow drawl. Yeah, me too, Johns. The storm rolled in quick and fierce, thunder cracking and bolts of lightning so bright it was almost blinding. The lightning looks like it struck the field, Sheriff. Should we go take a look? asked Johns. Sheriff Hansen was already on his walkie-talkie, calling the station. Sheriff Hansen, Johns and a couple of the other deputies took off towards the field. A little ways behind was Ralph Murdoch and his lackeys. They got to the edge of the field and saw smoke. Sure enough, the lightning had struck the field. They made their way closer when they started to smell something. What the hell was that smell? asked Sheriff Hansen. As they got closer, they couldn't believe their eyes. There, in the same spot the Andrews boys had been found, were three young men disemboweled, tied together with their entrails. Sheriff Hansen was frozen in his tracks. He couldn't believe the sight before him. Just then, they heard a blood-curdling scream behind them. Neither the sheriff nor his deputies could move. What they were seeing couldn't be real. There, before their eyes, was a clown, or what looked like a clown. It was something in a dirty, tattered clown suit. It was ripping Ralph Murdoch and his lackeys into pieces with its bony hands. They didn't stand a chance. The thing turned and looked at Hanson. Hanson knew right then who it was. It was Jim Bob. There was another blinding flash of lightning. When Hanson's vision cleared, the thing was gone. Sheriff, what the hell was that? Asked Johns. That was a sick justice, Johns, said Hanson. They searched the field for any sign of the thing, but other than the blood, guts, and body pieces, it's like it had never been there. The next day, Sheriff Hanson went back to the field. He went to the spot of Jim Bob's resting place. Apparently, that was the spot of the lightning strike. There was the pieces of flat stone that had been a makeshift grave marker that were the shreds of Jim Bob's clown costume. But what was missing, what was so disturbing, there was no signs of any remains. There were folks that went missing that Friday night, and Hansen knew there was no point in hoping to find them alive. Down deep, he was hoping not to find the remains. He didn't think he could take that sight one more time. The weekend passed without a sign of locating any remains. Hanson and his deputies knew Ralph Murdoch. Roy Jones and Jeff Walker 
will never be heard from again. Missing sounds more sane than the truth, boys. If we tell anyone what we saw, they'll lock us up in the loony bin, Hansen instructed. There wasn't a sign of the Danvers Circus. It's as if it had never, ever been there. <laughs>